What up? Thank you so much for your patience while I worked on getting this podcast episode out for you guys. Welcome to NurseCast, where we talk about issues swept under the rug for too long. So, <clears throat> so today we're going to talk about nurses eating their young. We're going to talk about nurses eating their young in reference to clinical instructors, in reference to nurses at clinical sites treating nursing students like they're ridiculous, like they're stupid. And this is coming from a nursing instructor's perspective. I feel like my career has allowed me to go into multiple different areas of nursing. I've seen so much enough to be able to talk to you guys about the nonsense that gets swept under the rug, the issues that people don't talk about enough, such as nurses eating their young. For starters, I feel like my very first job, and I know that I talked about this in one of my previous episodes, but my first job as a nurse was stressful. And it wasn't just stressful because of me just now becoming a nurse. It wasn't stressful just because I was a brand new nurse. That was obviously a large part of it because you can't get, you can't escape from that. You can't get away from graduating and going into a new profession and being stressed about whether or not you're going to pick up, whether or not you're going to learn, whether or not you're going to be good at this, whether or not you just wasted a shiz ton of money on a career path that you absolutely hate, that you just don't understand. That's a completely different ball game, a topic for another day, okay? But there was that, and then there was also my preceptor preceptee relationship, okay? My preceptor was very intelligent very good at being a nurse knew what she was doing absolutely i think my glasses are crooked 110 percent. but there were moments where i felt like the way in which she spoke to me was almost like she might as well just be saying you're dumb like you have no idea what you're doing yeah i don't know what i'm doing i just walked out of nursing school 10 seconds ago This is my first job. You don't think I know that? I'm trying to figure it out. That's why you're here, pumpkin. That's why you're here, sugar plum. In moments where I felt like she was losing her patience, I didn't have the voice that I have now, the voice that inevitably comes with experience. And you know, you think back and you're like, I wish, I wish I would have. And it's a good thing I didn't because I wouldn't have learned what I learned who I was at that point was necessary in order for me to become who I am now. I digress. I say all of that to say, as an instructor now, with the shoe being on the other foot, with me being on the opposite end of things, it is so important for me now to advocate for my students. I'll give you guys an example. I had an experience where one of my students who's super quiet, very willing to learn, but super quiet, had a nurse talk to her in a very disrespectful manner. And I have to check myself in those moments where I have to not give in to the urge to jump down that nurse's throat because that's also unprofessional. I have to stop taking the trauma of my experiences and wanting to bestow it on nurses that are doing exactly the same thing that they did to me when I just became a nurse. I feel like it is so important to me now to make a difference in a professional way, a way in which I didn't remember seeing some of my clinical instructors, some of my preceptees and preceptors, some of the other nurses on the floor at the first couple of jobs that I've had in ways that they didn't do it. Those are the nurses that kind of unfortunately shape the nursing profession to be unpleasant i don't care what anybody says but a large part of being happy going to work wherever you go it's your coworkers, especially in a in an area in a field that you need to work together it is a large part of being happy at your job when i have or when i see nurses treating brand new nurses treating student nurses like How come you don't know that? Why didn't you study? Why didn't you do this? It just doesn't make any sense to me. What are you trying to teach them? What's the goal here? That strong sense of intimidation and aggression. Why are you doing that? 
And I love how some of these nurses that revel in the fact that they're capable of doing that, they love to say, well, how else are they going to learn? You mean to tell me you believe that that's the only way people learn or you're just upset because you had that same experience and you now want everybody else to experience what you experienced. Why not switch things around? Why not be the positive force? Why not be the opposite of what you dealt with? I just don't understand. There is no need to eat your young. There is no need to jump down a brand new nurse's throat. They obviously want to be there. They want to succeed. And you talking to them as if they woke up that morning like, well, today's going to be the day that I don't want to succeed. What is the purpose? What is the point? At one of my contracts, I remembered talking to another coworker of mine and telling her how I thoroughly enjoy working with a particular nurse. And she was like, that's crazy because when she was precepting me, I hated her and I do my best to avoid her at all costs because when she precepts, she turns into a different person. Why? Why do you do that? Why do you become a different? Why do you feel like it is necessary to make a new nurse feel small when they are trying to come up? I don't care what anybody says. Somebody's going to say, well, they have to learn to develop their voice. That does not apply to this situation. There are 10 different things that they are thinking about right now. I don't want to mess up. I do not want to give this patient the wrong medication. I do not want to give this patient or put this patient in a situation that will stress them out even further. I want to be a good nurse. Everything takes time. You being the kind of nurse that wants to shove every single lesson down their throat and use that as an excuse to be disrespectful and aggressive, that doesn't make any sense. That makes you a shitty person. I don't understand why that would be something that you revel in, that you enjoy doing. I don't understand how you are able to put those two together and say that's the only way that they'll learn. I don't believe that. I don't believe that. I've had too many different experiences with preceptors and clinical instructors to say that is not true at all. You do not need to have an aggressive approach in order for them to learn. There is no logic in that. It's a different story if you run into a student or a new nurse that is abundantly unaware of everything that is going on and you begin to question what exactly they learned in nursing school that's a different situation that doesn't warrant aggression either that warrants taking that above their head going to the supervisor and saying listen she almost killed my patient this is the second time something like this happened that's another story and I know somebody's gonna be like well what if they make this mistake listen a mistake is guaranteed multiple of them there's no getting away from that as a new nurse or as a new anything in new professions I don't care what anybody says that doesn't make any sense either mistakes are guaranteed there are nurses that have been nurses for years decades that are still making mistakes so that also doesn't make any sense <clears throat> I remember talking to one of my fellow co-workers like somebody who's also um a clinical instructor at another location and she was saying how one of her students had reached out to the clinical coordinator and said can we please maintain uh communication or have this clinical instructor continue to be our instructor because this is the first experience that has been positive and we've learned the most with her well yeah yeah if you feel comfortable going to your clinical instructor that makes perfect sense that she or he would be the one that you learn the most with. If I feel like I can come to you and ask you a bunch of questions for the sake of my educational betterment, why wouldn't I learn more? If I'm in a scenario where I feel like you're going to insult me, you're going to make me feel ridiculous, you're going to make me feel small, not even just as a student nurse, but as a new nurse, that is more of a, that's more likely that a mistake will be made. In that particular situation, it's more likely that a new nurse or a student nurse will try to figure it out themselves for the sake of avoiding you jumping down their throat. You making them feel like they're not worth the opportunity to have you as a support system. And that's what you are. And that it baffles me to see stuff like this. I'll give you guys another example. One of my very first experiences as a brand new nurse, or excuse me, as a brand new nurse instructor I remembered one of my students coming to me and 
kind of being a little uncomfortable coming to me asking me a question. And I had to pause her in asking that question and saying, what, what's really going on? You seem uncomfortable. And she said, I know that you're going to tell me that this is a ridiculous question. And I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> First of all, ask me anything, please. Because I need to know where you stand and what you don't understand. You should not feel uncomfortable coming to me. The fact that you're this nervous makes me feel like your experience before me was trash. No, that's no bueno. That's not good. First of all, being a nurse is stressful by itself. Being a nurse is stressful enough. Being a nurse has a number of different categories that warrants stress. All of those things will be things that a new nurse will have to learn how to cope with and adjust to. And on top of that, I got to deal with you old nurses that are miserable and hate your jobs trying to make me feel ridiculous for deciding to come into this profession that I'm passionate about. I might not be passionate about it, but I'm here. I'm showing up and that matters for something. Don't try to make me feel small for that. And another mother freaking thing. Some of the administration, there is no support there. That's another topic that I talked about. Some of these topics, they're going to end up colliding. They deserve their own episode, but they all it all comes together. I feel like sometimes whenever there is a nurse, just a nurse, not a new nurse, not a nursing student, but a nurse who is tired of dealing with another nurse's nonsense, because this is a very interesting profession. It is quite the profession for catty behavior, let me tell you. And they take it to administration and administration says something along the lines of, it's been said in so many different ways, but something along the lines of, we all have to learn to get along. Are you serious? Is that it? <laughs> is that it? And we're supposed to feel like we have a support system in you. And we wonder why strange things happen in the hospital that get swept under the rug because administration doesn't want to come to terms with. They had ample opportunity to address an issue that they didn't. <laughs> and now the situation has escalated, especially when there's a paper trail. They're real quick to sweep that under the rug. Act like it didn't happen. And this is what leads to other issues. Other people with their hands or their, their positions in higher seats doing stranger things to get their attention. I'm not encouraging it. I'm not saying that illegal things need to continue happening. I'm saying it shouldn't be happening. I'm saying that there are so many opportunities prior to that to prevent it from happening. I'm saying that these are humans that we're talking about and administration and these older nurses act like we're dealing with systems. Like we don't have feelings. <laughs> We're coming to work just like you. We are showing up just like you. And if you have realized at this point in your career that you absolutely hate it and you think you're doing us a favor by treating those brand new nurses like trash so that they find another profession, you've lost your marbles. You lost your mind a long time ago. Long time now. You are a part of the problem. You are a part of the problem that you swear you're fighting to solve. Everybody's over here like, oh, there's such a high turnover rate. Nobody stays, but you're the one that's treating your preceptee like he or she has no sense. I, it, I absolutely hate it when I pick up a shift at some facility and there's a bunch of nurses at the nurse's station talking all of this nonsense about the one nurse who's or not about the one nurse, but about the new nurse. Y'all can't just go help her? What, like how much is it going to affect you negatively to just go help the new nurse? How bitter do you have to be within yourself and your life to find more peace and happiness and talking shit, talking mushrooms, about someone who is trying? I just don't understand it. I don't understand. And then I had another scenario where there was a nurse who at every opportunity she got, she would take it to say something negative about my students. 
or about the students that come from the school that I was working at. And when I addressed it, and this is something that they never anticipate, and this only tells me that this is something that she did on a consistent basis. Like every opportunity that she gets to, to make a nursing student feel ridiculous, she jumped on it. And this was one of the ways. And when I addressed it with her, listen, if you have a problem with my students, please understand that you can address it with me. That is the more professional approach. But so far, what I've been able to observe was significantly less professional than I'm sure what you've been taught in nursing school. Am I correct? And it's at that point that nothing is ever said. All the nonsense that was said in my absence, none of that is said in my presence. What does that say about you as an individual, as a nurse? If y'all are really this unhappy, seek therapy. It is not therapeutic to make someone else feel ridiculous. This is crazy. This is a real issue. This is a big issue. Like nurses are quitting jobs to avoid other nurses who don't know how to talk to new nurses, to nursing students. Nursing students are refusing to go back to a certain facility because certain nurses have a reputation for hating their job so much, they bestow that hatred on new students. Why doesn't that make you feel ridiculous about yourself? Why do you not feel like a child when you do certain things like that? I'm saying all of this to say there is obviously a better way and there's way too much proof that there's a better way. There's way too many positive outcomes be after or coming from a positive approach for people to continue saying that their approach needs to be negative. It needs to be aggressive in order for the nurse to become a good nurse. Oh, my God. Let me tell y'all. There was one particular day as a new nurse. I was sitting in the middle of the unit that I had started working at and my precepti preceptor had yelled at me like in the middle of the nurse's station. And I was so hell bent on not crying. And she had asked me to follow her, not asked, but demanded me to follow her so that she can tell me everything that I did wrong. And I didn't. I went to the bathroom and I sat in that stall and I cried and I got my stuff and I went home. And then she had the audacity to text me this long ass message about how I know you're going to be a great nurse. No, 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 no. No, I don't want any of that. You know that your approach was disrespectful. You know that your approach was way too aggressive, way too over the top. And it gave me strong performance vibes. Like you wanted everybody else that was looking on to look at you like, oh, she know what she's doing. Oh, she got these nurses, you know, right at, at the grip. I, 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 why? Why? This happens to so many nurses. What if I was one of the nurses that was like, nah, nursing ain't for me. If this is how it's going to be, nursing ain't for me. This is part of the reason why the turnover rate is so high. Yes, administration is a large part of it. Yes, short staffing is a large part of it. Being mistreated by patients, other issues being swept under the rug. These are issues, but nobody talks about eating your young as much as they talk about, oh, they don't care about nurses. Well, they don't. But some of you guys who have been here for as long as you have that are tired of fighting for nurses, you take that stress out on nursing students and new nurses, and you should be ashamed of yourselves. <laughs> you should. I understand being stressed. I'm a nurse. I understand that. I can say that I understand that. I can say that I relate. I can say that I can put your shoes on and tell you that it fits exactly the same as yours fit. I can say all of this, which is why I can say there is another way. There are other ways. So for you to be choosing the way that makes other people feel small or ridiculous really says more about you and less about the system. And it needs to be said more. It needs to be said more often. I genuinely do feel, though, that after having been a nurse for several years and after having dealt with the nurses eating their young and some nurses trying to... Even in some of my stories that I tell on my page, where some nurses tried consistently as, as a traveler or as a registry nurse to make me feel ridiculous or try to jump on me or dump on me and not expect me to speak up or not expect me to say anything. 
these are the moments where saying something means so much. I'm not always in a rush to walk out of a facility or be like, I don't have to deal with this. I'm not always in a rush to respond to somebody and tell them about themselves. You pick and choose your battles and you learn how to do that in this profession from being in this profession. It just sucks that some of the lessons are so gruesome and brutal. They don't need to be for you to learn the same lessons. They don't. In one of my other episodes, in my next episode, actually, what I'd like to talk about is how this also takes place in travel nursing and how eating your young takes place on a different scale with travel nurses, with registry nurses, between recruiters and their nurses. Sometimes recruiters love to make the nurse feel like they don't know what they're talking about when they're the ones that are playing games. Sometimes supervisors at certain facilities that travel nurses visit or travel nurses have a contract at, they love to tell them, oh, this doesn't take place here. We don't do this here. It's a different story if you're talking about the policy. But it's also a different story if you're saying that, you know, travel nurses usually do this. What is it that means that I, as a travel nurse, have to work differently or harder than the staff nurses. This is also a topic that deserves its own episode, but you know, we're obviously gonna touch on it now because it's a different variation of eating your young. It's just, it's a fancy way of saying bully. What? There's no need for it. And then when a travel nurse says, I don't have to deal with this, I'm not doing this. Then all of a sudden the facility's like, oh, she wasn't a good nurse. He wasn't a good travel nurse. He wasn't one of the good ones. No, he or she was one of the ones that put you guys in your place. You're the problem. This is a toxic environment. You guys bestow all these expectations on these travel nurses. And it's because in your mind, you're like, oh, they're making enough to be able to do this. You have the option to travel nurse. And if in your situation, the option isn't quite as available, that's nobody else's fault. That is no one else's fault. If you have children and a husband or an ailing loved one that you just cannot get away from long enough to take a travel contract, that is not the travel nurse's fault. It's not. So for y'all to be like, you make enough, or I wonder how much you make, don't ask a travel nurse that question. It's none of your business. It's rude. It's unacceptable. Because if a travel nurse says to you, how much do you make? You're going to say it's none of your business. Why is how much I make some of your business? Just because I make more doesn't mean that I deserve to do more. You have the option to put yourself in a different situation, a different scenario. And like I said, if you don't have the option, if your situation doesn't present that option, that's nobody else's fault. That does not give you the right to start pointing fingers or trying to bully the travel nurse or the registry nurse. These things are just not talked about enough. And some of these recruiters do not offer the right support. And that's why when some of these travel nurses walk out and everyone loves to say like people don't know how to commit, people don't know what hard work is. No, no, no. We certainly do, but we also know what self-respect is. We know what we deserve. And we know that this profession is far too vast and offers too much variety for us to stay somewhere where we're not welcome where the treatment is not what we deserve. These are things that I believe travel nurses, brand new nurses, student nurses should live by. You deserve the respect and you have the right to speak up and say, listen, I understand that you're my instructor, you're my preceptor, you know, you're my superior in some form, but that doesn't make me less of a human. That doesn't mean that I get to be spoken to in a way that warrants a lack of respect. You know better and you know you know better, but you're trying to get away with as much as you can get away from because for some reason it gives you power. And all that says is that you have stuff to work on. Your girl is just tired. Oh, what I've seen. Sometimes, yes, it is better to keep your mouth shut and keep it moving because you're almost done. The money is a necessity. You need this on your resume, whatever. You pick and choose your battles. Just understand yourself and understand where you stand in your profession to know which battles to fight, w where you got to let certain things go. Either way, y'all, thank you again for your patience. Thank you for chiming in. 
I will have another episode ready for you guys in a week. I promise, you know, check out all of my other platforms, everything else that I got going for y'all. My editor, Blake Quake Beats. Nursing is quite the profession. And if you're going into it, I still recommend that you go into it. I have faith in you. I have confidence in you. You know, just just stay strong. Keep your head up. Keep your chin up. You know what I'm saying? Thanks, guys. <laughs>